Well, thank you, everybody. Jay, what a nice introduction that was. One of the best of the day. Thank you. I'm so honored that I'm the one that gets that great introduction. So as you heard, uh, yeah, I've been involved in the zoo business for about 20 years now. It's hard to believe that when I look back at it, but it's been a great 20 years. And uh, I've been very fortunate in my life to find a career that I'm very, very enthusiastic and very passionate about. And so I want to talk about that today. I talk a little bit about passion, the power of passion, and why everybody out there needs to make sure you find your passion and that you run with it. And so let's start talking about what passion is. And it's pretty simple. You know, passion, Webster's Dictionary defines passion as a, fee, a strong feeling of excitement or enthusiasm about something or about doing something. It's a driving force that really is like no other. And people often tell me that my passion is infectious. And I'm very honored by that. I'm very humbled when people tell me that. But what that has done is it solidified my belief that passion can and should be used to better communities, change attitudes, and change minds. Something big to think about here today. So, of course, my passion lies in the natural world. However, it has deeper roots than that. It's a passion for life in general. You see, of course, I found this serene understanding that, that life continues on no matter how bad things get, no matter how down you become, and passion allows you to remember that. And so if you have that passion, no matter how down you become, it can uplift just about anybody. And passion can bring people together, and it's super easy to share. So with that said, you know, everybody in this room has a passion. It may not be that. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But everybody in this room has a passion. You may not, some of you out there, a lot of you out there, know what that passion is, and you've indeed followed that passion. There's a couple of you out there that may not have found your passion yet, and that's OK. It'll come to you. But there might be one, or maybe two of you out there, that know what your passion is, but you've decided for some reason not to follow that passion. And it's really you whoever you are that I'm talking to today, because you have to follow that passion. You have to go out there and find that passion, follow because it will better you. And what I'm amazed with to this day is the power passion has to change lives. I'm a prime example of that. You see, I always have been, and still am today, a very shy and introverted person. And a lot of people laugh when I say that because of my public persona. As Jay said, I love to, of course, find a camera. I love being in front of a camera. But it's not because I like being on TV. It's because I like to share my message with you. And of course, if it wasn't for my passion, I'd be horrified to be standing up here right now. But because I have such a love and a passion for the natural world, I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing right now than to be here telling you about the natural world. For example, this little critter, and I've got the real one right here. Yeah, it's the Madagascar cockroach. Often feared by many, often gets a lot of ewes, as you just heard. But what's amazing is that this little critter, my passion, allows me the opportunity to give this little guy a voice. You see, this is, as I said, the Madagascar hissing cockroach. Arguably one of the most important animals found on the entire planet. Now you're thinking, how is that possible? Well, it's possible because of what this little guy likes to eat. You see, he eats decaying vegetation, leaves, things of that matter that fall off the rainforest trees onto the forest floor. This guy comes along, he nibbles it up, and then he deposits it. I'll keep it PC today. He deposits that food back into the rainforest floor, back into the soil. And what he's depositing isn't just waste. It's little nutrient packs of incredible nutrients for the soil that actually helps to flourish that soil. It fertilizes that soil, allowing those trees and those plants to grow. Now, of course, we're all adults. We understand what the rainforest trees provide to us. You better not say paper. I mean <laughs> oxygen. <laughs> oxygen. Of course, the oxygen we breathe here on this planet is thankfully provided by all the great green that you see out there. Majority of the oxygen we get, of course, comes from the rainforest. Again, we all know that. But when, I, when I'm able to relay that moment, that, that information to a child that may be just grasping that concept for the first time, that is absolutely huge. That is a huge concept for me to be able to relay. Now, you add to that the medicines, the fruits, and yeah, even chocolate that comes from the rainforest. You quickly understand, everybody in here quickly understands just how important this little creepy critter that ends up on people's boots far too often, how important they can be. So remember that the next time you go out and buy a chocolate bar. And it's that moment right there that we just had that fuels my passion. 
My ability to excite you even just a little bit about a cockroach is why I do what I do. I absolutely love that interaction that we're, of course, able to have. And how do I know that? How do I know that I've been able to provide that to you? How do I know that at some point in my life I've been able to drive a child into a world of wonder about a bear, a tiger, even a cockroach? Because it happened to me. It's exactly how my career started. And I remember clear as day. I'm going to put this little guy back before I forget about him and something unfortunate happens to him. <laughs> we wouldn't want that. But I remember clear as day. I was in the sixth grade, 12 years old, and I had been given an assignment at school to shadow somebody in some career for the day to really figure out how exactly it was like to be in a career, to work at a job. So I chose to follow a gentleman at a local science center in my hometown of, of Cleveland, Ohio. And I had chosen him because he had this just incredible group of animals at the science center that he worked with. And so I had always loved animals, always wanted to knew, I thought I wanted to work with animals. I had this glorious fantasy of what this day was going to entail. I thought I'd be rolling down hillsides with giant pandas, watching bald eagles fly off into the horizon. But I quickly realized as I was there doing the work that that wasn't at all what animal care was. And if you've ever done animal care, you have pets, you know it's not always glorious. You're doing a lot of cleaning. You have the risk of getting bit, especially with some of the critters we work with. And so I, I was bummed. At the end of the day, I was bummed. I was pretty upset that, gosh, maybe animals aren't what I wanted to do. It, it was devastating to me. So before I left, I'll never forget this, the gentleman that I was shadowing looked at me and said, hey, by the way, before you go, I have one last thing I want to do with you. I want, I want you to do. So I walked down the hall, followed him, and we opened this office door. And I was amazed to look on this desk and see this little tiny owl alive sitting on this desk, calm as can be. And it was actually a sawed owl, much like the little guy you see here, quite an amazing bird, tiny little thing, cute as can be. And I was amazed by looking at this thing. And I was even more amazed when this guy picked this bird up and put him on his fist, and he's just sitting there happy as can be. And then I was shell-shocked when that guy turned around and put that owl right here on my hand. Blew me away. Now, I remember very clearly something amazing happened right at that moment. I'll be honest with you, at the time, 12 years old, I couldn't really comprehend what that was. But now that I look back at it, I know my passion was being born right then, right there. And I remember it. That's huge. It's so amazing to me. But what I did remember from that day is I do remember thinking to myself, I want to be able to provide the moment that this gentleman is providing to me, I want to be able to provide that to somebody else. I want to be able to share my love for this little owl to all of you. And so I'm so humbled and amazed to say that 25 years later, I am now able to do that. I can now share that excitement. But again, we'll talk more about that later. So you're probably sitting out there thinking, ah, that's a great story, but how do I find my passion? You know what? Honestly, that's the easy part. Do what you want to do. Go out there. Find what you're best, most passionate about. Do it. Simple as that. You, you want to go out there and help needy kids that need help? Help them. You want to go to Egypt? Go. You want to hold a cockroach? Come up here. Ask. <laughs> it's as easy as that. Do what you do. It's what you dream about when you dream. Easy as that. We were just talking to a wonderful woman out there about her bucket list, her and her husband moving that bucket list up. That's a passion. No matter what, you can have a passion. It can be just about anything. But you need to go out there, and of course, you do need to make that happen. Now, I will say, the one thing to keep in mind is that somebody out there might try to tell you that something's impossible. Don't let that happen. And I will be the first to tell you, do you know how many times I've been told doing what I'm trying to do here in Billings with a particular place that I work at is impossible? Yeah, just about every day. And I don't let that bother me. I don't let people derail my plans because they don't think it's going to happen. I have to try. And if you don't try, you will never know if your passions are realistic. So get out there. Try it. It's so incredibly important to keep that in mind and to, of course, move forward with what you want to do. And I will say that, of course, whether it's, it's providing a kid the opportunity to touch an armadillo or see an armadillo for the first time or helping an adult get over a fear of spiders, that is what passion is for me is all about. So, of course, as I said, I've been very, very fortunate. And I will have had many bumps in the road. Will you have bumps in the road? You bet you will. Are you going to have opportunity or times that you feel down in the dumps and you don't think you can carry on? Yeah. Who hasn't had that? 
But one thing that I want you to remember here today is I want you to remember that despite how bad you, you feel, the world will continue on. Why shouldn't you? Why be left behind? Something to remember. So at this point, I always like to tell people, and especially younger trainers in, in my career, I like to tell them about my dirty laundry. I like to get it out there. And not many people like to share their low points in their life, but I think it's so incredibly valuable to get out there and share those low points to let people know you're human. These bad points happen. And one of my worst points in my career involved this bird right here, incredible animal, called an Andean condor, one of the biggest birds in the world, found down in South America, talking 11 foot wingspan, talking about 20 pounds. You're talking a big animal. And I was working with this bird, start, first started working with him at the Columbus Zoo in Columbus, Ohio. I love this bird so much, I was able to move him to Florida with me when I went to, to Tampa. And this is a picture from Tampa. But when I first started working with this bird, I was very, very excited because only a few people had been selected to work with this animal because he was so dangerous. So of course, as a young trainer, I was just thrilled to have the opportunity to work with such a magnificent creature. And so what we would do is every day we'd work this bird, we'd train him, we worked him to fly, and he was all, of course, free reign. There was no equipment on him or anything to keep him on, on my hand. He was all free reign, and we would walk this bird throughout the zoo as an opportunity to provide those moments I just talked about, to provide those moments to our guests. Well, one particular day, this bird kind of ran ahead of me a little bit faster than normal. And I thought, okay, that's kind of strange, but I didn't think anything of it until I rocked around the corner behind this pine tree and found this bird on top of a three-year-old child. Yeah, he was sitting on that bird trying to bite that young lady. Terrifying. I panicked. Luckily, I was able to keep myself together enough to get the bird off the child, get the bird back inside, came back outside, and interacted with the family. It was a horrible moment. Shocked me. Rattled me to the core. I was a young trainer, you know, invincible, like we all feel when we're young. And it quickly made me realize that, my gosh, bad things can and certainly do happen. And honestly, that could have been a passion killer. That could have killed my passion to get back out there and again work that bird, have the confidence to understand that I messed up, but I can fix that. And fortunately, I had a great mentor at the time that sat me down and said, you know what, yeah, you messed up, but use this. Use this experience as an opportunity to learn. And look at this, here I am today helping you to understand and to learn that those bad things happen. Get them out there, learn from them, because one day you're going to be able to look back on that incident. You're going to either be able to learn from it, or better yet, you're going to be able to laugh at it. And I'll tell you, in my course of those 20 years, I have had some moments that I can look back at and have a blast with. From a 900-pound pig that refuses to move in the parking garage of Rockefeller Center, <laughs> to, ch to chasing a llama, a loose llama in the streets of New York City, to chasing the world's rarest dog that, whose leash broke in the middle of New Jersey. I have had my moments where I thought my career is over, but I didn't let that happen. I didn't let a kink in the track derail my passion as I move forward. So with that, I want you to have a big takeaway here today. And I want that takeaway to be the fact that passion is indeed infectious. If I can relay my love for a bald eagle, or my care for a bald eagle to that little guy right there, that little guy might just go out and see a bald eagle one day and say, hey, that's a bald eagle. Here's what they do for our environment. Or he may be older and he may find a bald eagle on the river and he may call and say, hey, there's an injured bald eagle. I care about these birds, so I wanna help out. You, sitting out there, relay your passion. Maybe somebody out there has a passion for cancer research. If you relay that passion to a child, you might just be relaying that passion to a future doctor, and guess what? That doctor could be the one that finds the cure for that cancer that you are so passionate, that cancer research that you are so passionate about. Now, I have been fortunate in my career to have such a very large audience that I can relay that passion to. But guess what? You don't have to have a large audience. There is a real thing called the power of one. It's a real thing. One person really can make a change. And that change may not be global, it may not be statewide, but it could be somebody's life. I'm a prime example of that. That gentleman that I shadow changed my life forever. That is a powerful thing to comprehend. Your passion can change somebody. Think of that, think of that. Absolutely amazing topic to think about. So with that said, 
I want you to consider taking that ideology there, that power of passion, and bringing it to our community. If we can all get together, we can stop the bickering, we can bring our passions together, and we can take those passions out and strengthen this, strengthen this community, work together, we can make a community that we're all proud of, that we're all part of. We're here together. Let's work together. So as you leave today, I want you to remember the speakers that you have had the pleasure, have we all, had the pleasure to see up here today. And I want you to remember one thing. Everybody that's standing on this stage today is here because they have a passion or they have an enthusiasm about something. And I can guarantee you, if you go and talk to every one of those speakers, they will tell you first and foremost, they have had certain struggles in their life. Lisa did a fantastic job of explaining those struggles. It happens to all of us. But they did not let that stop them. They went out there, they took those struggles, and they turned them into victories. And they are very proud and happy and, and enthusiastic and passionate with where they're at today. They did it. Why can't you? Thank you.